So welcome back to the Friday vlog series where today we're gonna to split it into two smaller parts. Part number one, I'm gonna share with you what's going on with the Factor O2 build. Unfortunately, it didn't happen on Monday this week and also when to expect the Winspace first impressions video, which I know many people are asking about. And part number two, a new channel partner I am super excited to share with you. But first of all, you may be wondering what is going on with my surroundings and excuse there's a garbage truck man out there and there's somebody building next door. I'm actually in Melbourne at my sister's place having a little bit of me time for a few days, catching up with some mates before the school holidays kicks in. My wife has been away recently and she said, you need to get away. So here I am in Melbourne. So that's the surroundings and on school holidays because that starts literally tomorrow. This will be the last video on the Friday vlog series for the next two to three weeks while I spend some time with the kids over school holidays. So it's an opportunity for me to pause and reflect and I just wanted to say a massive, massive thank you to all those who click on my videos, watch my videos, support my work, whether that be subscribers, channel members, or even people that just swing by from time to time. I really appreciate your support and while we aren't at 100,000 subscribers yet, we're getting close and I know it's just a number, but for me, it's more validation that I made the right decision. In 2019, I sold a business that I was working on that was unsuccessful financially at the time. And it, despite it being unsuccessful financially, I still wanted to work on it because there'd been a lot of blood, sweat and tears put into that business, but I stepped away, made the decision to go pretty much full-time into YouTube and the Road Cycling Academy, and I'm so glad that I made that decision. So massive thank you to everybody out there that's been supporting my work. So part one of this video is serving mostly as an update. I'm conscious some people say you don't need to give us an update, but I kind of disagree because when you set expectations with people, the audience, and things change and you don't share that with them, I think that's a little bit unreasonable. So regarding the Factor O2 build, on Monday this week, I was driving to Brisbane to see Taylor Cycles. Jay Taylor is his name. He was gonna be building the Factor O2 and he gave me a ring and he said, do you know that Brisbane is about to go into a three-day COVID lockdown because of an outbreak? I doubt you wanna come down into this part of town. So we've postponed the build until further notice. I did a U-turn, I was about halfway down to Brisbane, did a U-turn, drove down the highway, pulled off, bit flustered, going too fast, first speeding fine, a long time, got a $450 speeding fine, thanks to the police in Queensland, thanks to COVID lockdown, I had an awesome Monday. So the Factor O2, it's still in a box, unfortunately, in the Sunshine Coast, and given the Easter school holidays, It'll probably be another couple of weeks, two, three, two, three. Let me try that again. It'll be about two to three weeks from today when that thing is finally built up and it will be Jay Taylor who builds up the Factor O2. Now regarding the wind space, which recently got built up at Top Line Cycles, and after that build, I have been getting a lot of questions about what that bike is like to ride. So I wanted to share with you what you can expect in terms of when I'll be able to share my first impressions. Now, I've ridden the wind space four times. Three of those were on the indoor trainer. Why, I hear you ask. Well, we had incredible rains in the Sunshine Coast area for almost a couple of weeks, just after the bike got built, couldn't really take it out. And as a result, I've only had one ride on the wind space. Then I've obviously come to Melbourne, I go back and it's school holidays, but when I get back, I plan to prioritize that bike in terms of riding and I want to ensure that I do bunch rides, I do hill climbs, I take it on long cruises. I want to get a good two to three weeks of riding experience before I share my first impressions with you because I don't want to rush. I'm conscious there's a lot of people waiting for my view or my lens on the bike because of my experience with mainstream bikes and how does the wind space compare. So I want to ensure that I'm not rushing it and I'm sharing with you a thorough first impressions overview in which I will also share with you a breakdown of all the bits and pieces and the associated costs. So please expect a first impressions video mid to late April at the very latest. So that's a quick little update on the wind space and also the factor. Part number two of this video is while I am here having a bit of me time in Melbourne, I also had the opportunity to meet with a new channel partner being the peddler who are head office out of Collingwood in Melbourne, Victoria. 
Now I'm conscious many of the skeptics out there aren't gonna believe me, but it was at the back end of 2019 when the channel was around the 20,000 subscriber mark where I started to look for channel partners relating to cycling apparel. And last year I actually partnered with Jack Roo who have made the RCA kit and they've been fantastic. But the challenge that I had with Jack Roo is they only do custom wear. They don't do retail wear, which is what the peddler do. They do both custom wear and retail wear. So after a few long conversations with the sales director there, Simon Maloney, learning about the brand, trying on the gear, and their bibs are probably the best bibs I've ever tried on in my entire life, the peddler will be making the new RCA kits with a new design that they've put together. And I will also be sharing with you from time to time some of their retail range by wearing their kits in videos. You can check out their retail range in a link below. But for me, the thing that really sold me on the Peddler is yes, they're a premium brand and there's a price associated with that. They're stylish and they're cool, but unlike many other brands that operate in this space, I felt like there's no wank factor or perhaps put more politely or as they would put it, they're an inclusive brand. And certainly after working with them for quite a period of time now behind the scenes, it's been about six or seven months we've been having conversations for and meeting with the team yesterday. They certainly feel like an inclusive brand and I really like that about them and you'll hopefully see that for yourself through the channel and you will hear that right now from two of the owners of The Peddler as we round out this video. Thanks again so much for your support over the last, well, three years it's almost been now. I'll catch you in a few weeks time and I hope you enjoy some scenes from The Peddler. So there's people in your offices, what's going on here? So we're, we're standing in what we call the LLCC. So this is the local loop cycling club. Okay. Peddler is actually at the back of this club okay. or this space and that's where our offices are. And this is effectively a retail showroom but we also run Tom's Coffee here and at any morning you can have you know 10 to 20 cyclists drinking coffee after their morning ride. Going back it's almost the approach to design so I really like getting into the concept of an idea and then kind of running with that and exploring that and, and often you'll see collections that come through that um, kind of a bit left a field as far as you know one of our collections was about sound and so it was that kind of idea of you know sound and the sounds of the road and when you you know ride on different surfaces that kind of how you kind of transition between gravel to road and how that kind of generates this kind of tactile audible quality that I kind of really loved and I wanted to bring that through into a collection so yeah I'm talking about even when